A large storm is going to be impacting the United States over the next few days, and this is going to bring the return of severe weather to the Great Plains, the Midwest, and as well as the Ohio Valley between today all the way through Friday and Saturday, where damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes will be possible. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about this severe weather event, and in addition to that, we're going to talk a little bit about Tropical Storm Ernesto, which is expected to become a major hurricane in the Atlantic ocean we are going to begin with what's happening across the united states this morning and overall the weather pretty nice across most of the country it's been very dry but also pretty warm across the east coast and all the way back through the southern plains but the area that we're going to be focusing on today and eventually throughout the rest of the week will begin in the central plains today and that will eventually move into the midwest and the ohio valley by thursday and friday from last night we had a large complex of thunderstorms develop in colorado that brought some damaging winds to colorado the Nebraska and very far northern Kansas. In addition to that, we also saw some heavy rainfall. That complex will be weakening throughout the morning, but we're going to be watching for initiation across Missouri, which could also bring the potential for some flooding during the day today. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is Wacky Weather Wednesday. Overall, it's a pretty large area, but it's going to be anywhere from the northern and central plains back into parts of the Midwest for the main core of severe weather today. We do have a two out of five slight risk of severe weather weather back over in four different states, including Northwest Missouri, Northeast Kansas, Southeast Nebraska, and Southwest Iowa. Basically, if you're near Kansas City, Lincoln, Nebraska, or perhaps back near Omaha, that is where the greatest risk for severe weather will be today. Now, the main concern overall is going to be damaging winds. That's going to be the main concern across the board. We're going to be watching for storms firing up during the mid to late afternoon and early evening. This will be predominantly a linear line of storms after sunset, which means that this will mostly be a wind threat across the central plains. In addition to that, the large hail risk will basically be in the same area where we are going to be watching for some large hail, especially out of the initial supercells that do develop. The other thing that we're going to be watching for today, primarily in that slight risk region, is the potential for an isolated tornado or two. It's a pretty low risk today. I don't think we're going to see anything out of the ordinary, but there is a chance that we do go live later this evening for this potential threat. The greatest potential will be anywhere from about 5 o'clock up to about 8 to 9 o'clock today. Tonight, and that's when we're going to be watching for a couple of discrete supercells to fire up back over in northeast Kansas and southeast Nebraska. And any storms that can stay discrete for long enough could produce an isolated tornado. And that could also go into Iowa and Missouri as more of a brief QLCS tornado risk out of a line of thunderstorms after like 7 o'clock or so this evening. So that's what we're looking at in terms of the tornado risk for today. It's a low risk. It's not zero, though. And then once we go into tomorrow, which is tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday, we do have another large risk for severe weather. This one's a little bit higher, though, than today when it comes to at least the area that it's covering. We have a large slight risk across basically the entire state of Illinois and as well as most of Missouri and eastern Kansas and as well as southern Wisconsin. Now, in addition to this, we do have a marginal threat that goes all the way back into Oklahoma, where we could see a couple of hail and wind events occur during the afternoon and evening tomorrow. Now, here's the primary concern. It's going to be damaging winds. I would not be shocked if confidence grows if we have an enhanced risk for damaging winds as we go into tomorrow. So, and then we're also going to be watching for large hail across the Midwest, especially out of those initial supercells that do develop during the late afternoon. And then the tornado risk for now is a large 2% anywhere from southern Wisconsin back into Missouri and Illinois, which does mean that this is very possible that we also go live tomorrow. We might be live today and we also might go live tomorrow. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified if and when we do go live. I do think though that there is a chance that we get some sort of 5% tornado risk at this somewhere. It just depends again if confidence does grow. I could see two areas where that could occur. One back over in parts of southeast um, Iowa and back into northern Missouri and western Illinois or perhaps a little bit further down here to the south back over in central southern Missouri and perhaps even into southern Illinois. Now again, it's not a guarantee we're going to see something like that, but if confidence grows, one of those two spots could see a 5% tornado risk for tomorrow. Now in my opinion, today's tornado threat could go a bit crazier than tomorrow's, but it's going to depend on a couple of things. The main thing is going to be if storms actually are discrete later today and if they stay that way. So this is what we're looking at for the tornado parameter values today across parts of the central plains. And notice how these values kind of creep up as we get closer to around 5 to 6 o'clock tonight, just in time for rush hour, anywhere just to the northwest of Kansas City, back towards Lincoln, Nebraska. I do think if we do see a tornado today, it will more than likely just be to the south of Omaha. That's where I'm thinking the greatest 
greatest concern would be today. But again, it's going to be contingent on there being some sort of discrete supercell. So that's going to be the biggest thing for today that we'll have to watch for. This is right around 9 to 10 o'clock tonight. Notice how that tornado threat really dies out pretty quickly. So I don't think today's tornado risk is going to be a super long one. But if any storms can stay discrete, we very easily could see at least one or two tornadoes. But again, it's a big if for today. Here's what the timing looks like. We'll have some showers and storms out there this morning. This will eventually turn into a bit more of a potentially localized flooding threat from Iowa back into parts of northeast Arkansas during the morning and even early afternoon hours. Then eventually, as we go later into today, we're going to be watching for reinitiation near boundary right around about five to six o'clock is when those first storms will start to fire up anywhere between Omaha back into north and northeastern Kansas. And then eventually, as we go later into the evening, we'll be watching these storms moving eastbound. They'll probably start to become more clustered together and more linear, which will eventually move into more of a wind threat after sunset tonight. But any storms that can stay discrete will have the potential for a tornado. And I honestly do think this will probably be the prime spot for a tornado as we go into the late afternoon and as well as into the early evening. Eventually, as we get closer to about midnight, we'll be watching those storms moving across Kansas City. Parts of central Iowa and northern Missouri will also get included in that. But again, the main concern really anywhere after sunset should be predominantly wind with maybe a brief tornado still being possible. Now, the Midwest, as we go into Thursday, it's going to be a little interesting. Overall, we don't have a really favorable environment for tornadoes. These are the hodographs, which give us an idea basically of how much spin we have throughout the atmosphere. And that goes anywhere from the surface all the way up to the troposphere, which is a pretty large range. And what we're looking at here is not really that impressive. We do have some curved hodographs, but they're just not really curved that much. So I think overall, if we have any sort of tornado threat, we're going to need some sort of discrete supercells, which is something that I do think will happen on Thursday. So this is what we're looking at for late tonight. Storms will be moving through Missouri and Iowa, kind of dying out as they move into Illinois and Indiana tomorrow morning. Eventually by the afternoon, we'll be watching for some storms to reinitiate. Few areas to watch for, one of which will be Southern Illinois. The other one will be Southern Missouri and Central Missouri. And then the third area will be back over in South and Eastern parts of Iowa for those initial supercells to develop. These should predominantly begin discrete and then move into linear. So I think, again, it's going to be kind of similar to what we're going to see today. But I do think the tornado risk does remain pretty low unless we can see the you know these storms stay discrete for a long period of time it could be a little bit different but for the time being i'm more concerned about the wind threat make sure you're prepared for that if you're in the midwest or even parts of the ohio valley and then beyond today and tomorrow, we'll be watching for some more showers and thunderstorms in the Ohio Valley for Friday. I think if we have any sort of se severe weather, it should be predominantly a wind threat, maybe a little bit of an isolated tornado risk. Once we go into Saturday, that trough continues to move eastbound. That should kind of keep Ernesto, which is expected to become a major hurricane, away from the United States. So that's the hope as of right now. The European model, though, over the last run actually brings us much closer to the east coast of the United States, closer to New England than initially forecasted. So this will be something to watch for. It is a bit of a trend to the West, not guaranteed it's going to impact either New England or even Nova Scotia, but right now the European model brings it at least towards Nova Scotia as we go into late Sunday into Monday. So something to watch for, but again, we'll be talking about more about that here in just a second. And then once we go into the beginning and middle of next week, things do remain pretty quiet across most of the country. The only thing that we'll be watching for are small scale features that could bring some isolated severe weather events in the Northern Plains or perhaps the Midwest. But now this is what our Ernesto looks like right now. It is currently impacting Puerto Rico and some of the lesser Antilles and will be moving through parts of the Dominican Republic today. There is a lot of convection right now bubbling right near the center of this. It is a very impressive tropical storm. It will likely be a hurricane by the time you're actually seeing this forecast. Right now it is a strong tropical storm though unless something does change between now and the time this video is out. Notice right now again it is currently around Puerto Rico. It is going to be moving northwest and it is still moving pretty quickly at about 15 miles per hour. It is is expected to become a major hurricane as we go into Friday, so this will likely be our next major hurricane. Barrel was the other one that we've had in the Atlantic Ocean this year. It'll probably only get to a low-end Category 3 and then eventually impact Bermuda. Bermuda is likely to see some pretty big, big impacts out of this as we go into late Friday and as well as into Saturday. And then by the time we go into Sunday, it becomes pretty uncertain where this goes. Most models still bring this out to sea, but there are a few, like the European model, that do bring this more towards Nova Scotia. That could impact Nova England a little bit more with at least elevated wave heights, so that'll be something to watch for out of our Nesto. But for the time being, no reason to be concerned if you're in Florida or really anywhere along the East Coast. Just be mindful if you're going to the beach. Something to watch for definitely, though, still if you're in New England or Nova Scotia. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.